This man runs a clean energy company directly in competition with Tesla. His company also happens to be the best performing tech stock of 2022. So how did he manage to leave Tesla in the dust in a year where everybody lost money? And how does this stock over performance represent a very big opportunity for Tesla in 2023? Today I'm gonna break down how he did so well and how these new investor preferences will permeate into other stocks in the same sector and ultimately be an important positive catalyst for Tesla in 2023. Okay, so for some context, a couple of days ago, I wanted to know what the best tech stocks were of last month in December. And this is good information because it helps us understand how investor preferences are changing in a very, very dynamic market. And maybe there's a really good company that I missed. So I wrote some software to compare hundreds of tech stocks between December 1st and December 31st. And I found two stocks in particular that had done really, really well in that period. MongoDB up 33% and Smartsheet up 35%, both software publishers. Both companies were growing revenues pretty nicely, but they were still unprofitable. But they were trending in the right direction though, so they could become profitable sooner than expected. This got me curious though. I wanted to know what the best performing tech stock of 2022 was. So I ran my query again with different parameters this time. And what I found was rather surprising. Every single tech stock in 2022 was negative except for one. And there it was, Enphase, company that competes directly against Tesla's energy business. And not only was it positive, but it was up 40% in a year where the Nasdaq and the S&P 500 did horribly and a year where Tesla lost 70% of its market cap. So I thought there must be a logical explanation. There's no way that two companies in the same industry doing similar things just had such a big dichotomy in performance. So I started comparing revenues and both companies grew revenues pretty nicely in 2022 at 81% and 54% respectively. It's not enough to justify a 110 percentage point of performance. So what about profits? So in this scenario, 409% for Enphase and Tesla did about 98% year over year. But in the three year chart, Tesla did 219% and Enphase did 97%. So it kind of balances out. And again, this is not enough to cause such a big difference. But something hit me, these were not good comparables because Tesla at the moment is valued for three revenue segments, auto, services, and energy, whereas Enphase is only being valued on their energy business. So I had to compare Enphase to Tesla's energy business alone. And there it was. Enphase had consistently grown their energy business for three years in a row, whereas Tesla was up and down. In fact, in some quarters, Tesla's revenue actually went down. Not only that, but Tesla's energy business only turned profitable two quarters ago, whereas Enphase has been consistently profitable since Q3 of 2020. So the question is, why does the market give Enphase three times the premium it gives Tesla? I believe the market is valuing profits from the energy business at three times the multiple of profits from the auto business. And the reason for that is because after the war in Ukraine, demand for battery storage has been extremely high. So much so that if you wanted to buy a mega pack for $2.6 million today, you wouldn't get it delivered until 2025. So that's like two year backlog. And this my friends gives the market a high degree of certainty about energy demand in the future. Whereas not so much for the auto business. Of course, we all know EVs are gonna grow very well into the future as we climb the adoption curve. But for institutional managers, this sounds like a little bit of hopium. They're not very good at putting hopium and spreadsheets. Anyway, this is what will happen in 2023. As energy revenue becomes a bigger part of Tesla's total revenue, and as they continue to grow gross margins, which are already at 10%, the market will start giving Tesla the same premium that it gives Enphase in proportion to the amount of mega packs that Tesla can deliver and install, of course. And this could go a long way from 40 PE, which is what Tesla has right now, to 120 PE, which is what Enphase enjoys today. I want to do a whole video about the energy business and break down gross profits, break down the future cash flows, break down competitors. So if you want to watch that video in all its glory, leave a comment down below. Also completely unrelated, it's funny how the price cut that we saw coming three weeks ago came to fruition and the same exact thing that we discussed with the market expanding actually happen it's shocking right you drop prices the market increases and you sell more anyway we're already 30 percent off the lows and if this bottom remains aunt kathy perfectly timed the bottom if you want to know how kathy wood did it i actually broke it down in this video right here and it's funny how people were flaming me for defending kathy wood because she underperformed the benchmarks last year but you gotta understand her strategy is not gonna work in a bear market and while some of her picks are sometimes questionable on Tesla, cheese pot on every single time. In any case, thank you for watching and see you next time.